United States Naval War College graduation ceremony for the class of 2022. Guests are asked to, to remain seated for student and faculty processions. For the student procession, the Navy Band Northeast will begin by playing the Naval War College March, written by former Secretary of the Navy, Ambassador J. William Middendorf II, Naval War College Foundation Trustee Emeritus followed by the traditional pomp and circumstance. The faculty procession will be led by the faculty marshal, Professor Charles Chadbourne, and the Dean of Academics, Dr. Phil Hahn.
78 nations represented in the graduating class are the Republic of Albania, People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, Republic of Angola, Argentine Republic, Commonwealth of Australia, Republic of Azerbaijan, Kingdom of Bahrain, People's Republic of Bangladesh, Republic of Benin, Confederate Republic of Brazil, Republic of Bulgaria, Republic of Cameroon, Canada, Republic of Chile, Republic of Colombia, Republic of Croatia, Republic of Djibouti, Dominican Republic, Republic of Ecuador, Arab Republic of Egypt, Republic of Equatorial Guinea, Republic of Estonia, French Republic, Gabonese Republic, Federal Republic of Germany, Republic of Ghana, Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Hellenic Republic, Republic of India, Republic of Indonesia, State of Israel, Italian Republic, Jamaica, Japan, Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, Republic of Kenya, Republic of Korea, Republic of Latvia, Lebanese Republic, Republic of Lithuania, Republic of Madagascar, Malaysia, Republic of Maldives, Islamic Republic of Mauritania, United Mexican States, Montenegro, the Kingdom of Morocco, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, New Zealand, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Kingdom of Norway, Sultanate of Oman, Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Republic of Panama, Republic of the Philippines, Republic of Poland, Romania, Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Republic of Senegal, Republic of Serbia, Republic of Seychelles, Republic of Singapore, Republic of South Africa, Kingdom of Spain, Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka, Kingdom of Sweden, Taiwan, United Republic of Tanzania, the Kingdom of Thailand, Democratic Republic of Timor-Leste, Togolese Republic, Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Republic of Tunisia, Ukraine, United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, United States of America, and Socialist Republic of Vietnam. United States Armed Services and United States Government Agencies represented in the graduating class are the United States Navy, the United States Marine Corps, the United States Army, the United States Air Force, the United States Space Force, the United States Coast Guard, the United States National Guard, the Central Intelligence Agency, the Department of Defense, the Department of the Navy, the Department of the Army, the United States Senate, the United States House of Representatives, the Defense Criminal Investigative Service, the Defense Intelligence Agency, the Defense Senior Leadership Development Agency, the Department of Commerce, the Department of Defense Inspector General, the Department of Energy, the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Health and Human Services, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Department of Justice, the Department of State, the Department of the Treasury, the Department of Veterans Affairs, the Executive Office of the President of the United States, the Federal Aviation Administration, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, 
the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, the Government Accountability Office, the Hawaii Army National Guard, the Marine Corps Intelligence Activity, the Military Sealift Command, the Mississippi Army National Guard, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, Naval Air Systems Command, Naval Air Warfare Center, Naval Criminal Investigative Service, Naval Facilities Engineering Command, Naval Installations Command, Naval Justice School, Naval Postgraduate School, Naval Undersea Warfare Center, Naval Sea Systems Command, Naval Special Warfare Command, Naval Surface Warfare Center, the Naval War Care College, Navy Cyber Warfare Development Command, Navy Legal Services Command, Navy Personnel Command, Navy Recruiting Command, Navy Mine Warfare Development Center, Office of Administration of the U.S. Courts, Office of the Chief of Naval Operations, Office of the Chief of Naval Personnel, Office of the Judge Advocate General, the Office of Naval Intelligence, Surface Warfare Officers School Command, the United States Naval Academy, U.S. Africa Command, U.S. European Command, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, U.S. Agency for International Development, U.S. Army Public Affairs Center, U.S. Commission on Security and Cooperation in Europe, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, U.S. Cyber Command, U.S. House of Representatives Armed Services Committee, the U.S. Joint Staff, U.S. Marshals Service, U.S. Pacific Fleet, U.S. Public Health Service, U.S. Secret Service, U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee, U.S. Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee, U.S. Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, U.S. Senate Office of Legislation Affairs, U.S. Special Operations Command, and Walter Reed National Military Medical Center.
please rise for the arrival of the official party rendering honors to the Secretary of the Navy, the national anthem, and remain standing through the invocation. Parade the Colors. The national anthem will be sung by musician second class Holden Moyer from the Navy Band Northeast. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave? Retire the colors. Lieutenant Commander Rob Fastnot, Command Chaplain, Naval Station Newport, will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Creator of the wind and seas, your word is a light upon our path and a salve to our weary souls. Today we celebrate a momentous occasion of graduation from this prestigious institution. We thank you for the students and instructors, friends and families gathered here. 
These students came from every clime and place to go out from here knowing that victory is from the sea. War begins in our minds, but peace comes from our hearts. May we all operate from a shared respect of humanity as lovers of our neighbors. This morning, we honor the transcendent, those who have come before us, and those who will follow. In all your holy names we pray, amen. Please be seated. All military members, please uncover at this time. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the members of our official party. Captain Christopher Rohrbach, Chair, Joint Military Operations. Dr. Kevin McCraney, Chair, Strategy and Policy. Dr. Derek Reverend, Chair, National Security Affairs. Colonel Jay Schnelli, Deputy Dean, Center for Naval Warfare Studies. Rear Admiral Retired Edmund Cashman, Dean, College of Maritime Operational Warfare. Rear Admiral Retired Margaret Klein, Dean, College of Leadership and Ethics. Professor Walt Wildeman, Dean, College of Distance Education. Professor Thomas Mangold, Dean, International Programs and Maritime Security Cooperation. Dr. Phil Hahn, Dean of Academics. Dr. Jay Hickey, Interim Provost. The Honorable Carlos Del Toro, Secretary of the Navy and Rear Admiral Shoshana S. Chatfield, the 57th President of the United States Naval War College. It is my honor to present Rear Admiral Chatfield. Good afternoon. Well, I guess good morning. If you're on uh, European time, good afternoon. If you're on the West Coast and following us virtually, good morning. I know that many in our uh, graduating ranks today have friends and family tuning in from all over the world. So to our honored guests and all of those who are with us here in Newport and virtually, globally, I want to welcome each of you and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Secretary Del Toro, for taking time out of your busy schedule to support our graduation ceremony. The last time the Secretary and I were sharing a stage, and that's a big honor for me twice this year, uh, we were at the USS Constitution for the change of command uh, for Skipper B.J. Farrell. And the difference about that day, even though it was sunny, was it was about 19 degrees, and I was quite aware that the Secretary was hoping that I would speak a little faster. <laughs> I'm grateful that today it is a beautiful day in Newport. And I'm also somewhat grateful, despite the events of yesterday, um, that we can enjoy an unobstructed view of the Claiborne Pell Bridge. So I hope that everybody has a very pleasant day, that you remembered your sunscreen, and uh, please remember that uh, your uh, sunglasses are making you look really sharp and dangerous today. <laughs> I would also like to thank Admiral Kack the Chief of the German Navy for joining us today. Thank you, sir. I know it's a very tumultuous and busy time in Europe, and we're grateful that you could join us to support our transatlantic alliance and our students who are receiving diplomas today. Thank you. Today, we are also joined by Ambassador J. William Mittendorf II. You've already heard his wonderful march this morning, and I want to thank you, sir, for attending our graduation ceremony and recognize your many years of service to the Naval War College and our mission. Thank you, Ambassador, for making the trip to Newport today. I would also like to thank our Naval War College Foundation, uh, represented here today by Captain Retired 
uh, their chief executive officer, Mr. George Lang. Uh, I would like to, ch to thank all of the members of the Foundation Board of Trustees, the staff, and the Foundation members, uh, the generosity in gifts uh, that have been given to the Naval War College have provided critical funding. It has enriched and enhanced the programs and initiatives that we are able to offer, so thank you. Now I know that we have many distinguished visitors here in person and also viewing us online. So thank you to all uh, of those distinguished visitors uh, who are dialed in today and supporting our community. I'd also like to give a warm welcome to our interim provost, to our deans, to our incredible faculty and staff. This community has set the bar high for our students and equipped these graduates to be tomorrow's leaders. And it is so satisfying to stand here and to see the fruits of those labors. We know that each one of you is ready to proceed to your next assignment as advocates for preservation of the peace and preservation of this security environment across the, the globe. I'd also like to say thank you to our dedicated military families and loved ones. Your support and endurance is what enables each member of this uh, student body to be able to keep their focus on their work. And now that our graduates are leaving us, it will be ever more important to continue that love and support, patience when needed, and pep talks when needed as people return to their operational assignments. And now to the class of 2022, congratulations. And I'm gonna repeat that a little bit. And now to the class of 2021, congratulations. And now to the class of 2020, Congratulations, because we have members from each of those classes here with us today. COVID can't beat us. You came and you'll walk and you'll remember this day and your experience with the Naval War College for the rest of your lives. I was um, just yesterday that Admiral Cack said, in my professional life, it was the best year I had. So, sir, thank you. I know that your sentiment conveys, and I know that uh, each member of the class will reflect fondly back at the time at Newport. Students, you are graduating at a time of conflict in the world, and the lessons you have learned may be needed sooner than you anticipated. During your time in Newport, the Russian Federation has invaded a sovereign neighbor, bringing interstate war back to Europe at a level not seen since the end of the Second World War. We, along with our allies and partners, are standing together against this unprovoked aggression and are employing all available security cooperation tools in support of the Ukrainian people as they defend themselves in support against this aggression. And although this conflict may, see far, may seem far away from Newport, this war has directly impacted our Naval War College community. And for that reason, I ask you to join with me in a short moment of silence for our support to our Ukrainian students and their families and our alumni who are facing danger today at the hands of all Russian instruments of national power, including military action in violation of, of international law. Thank you. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. The Honorable Carlos Del Toro was sworn in as the 78th Secretary of the Navy on August 9th, 2021. Born in Havana, Cuba, Secretary Del Toro immigrated to the United States with his families 
as refugees in 1962. He was raised in the Hell's Kitchen neighborhood of New York City, where he attended public schools and received an appointment to the United States Naval Academy, where he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in electrical engineering in 1983. His 22-year naval career included a series of critical appointments and numerous tours of duty at sea, including being the first commanding officer of the guided missile destroyer USS Bulkley, DDG-84 senior executive assistant to the director for program analysis and evaluation in the office of the secretary of defense and special assistant to the director and deputy director of the office of management and budget after retiring at the rank of commander secretary del toro founded sbg technology solutions incorporated in 2004 as its CEO and president, he supported defense programs across a host of in immediate and long-term Department of Navy issue areas, including shipbuilding, AI, cybersecurity, acquisition programs, space systems, health, and training. He graduated from our Naval War College in 1996 with a master's in national security studies and he has also earned a master's in space systems engineering from the naval postgraduate school and a master's in legislative affairs from george washington university will all of our attendees please join me in welcoming the 78th secretary of the navy the honorable carlos del toro Good morning, Naval War College. My God, is there a prettier view in the face of the earth? You're all so very lucky. I can't tell you how proud I am to be here today with all of you. President Chatfield, Admiral, Mr. Secretary, thank you for your leadership, Admiral, of this magnificent institution, our beloved Navy War College. I have great memories of studying here as a young Naval officer and my tiny little office closet under the stairs at 134 Jones Street while my wife Betty cared for our four small children. I couldn't have done it without her, and I thank her from afar. To this day, we both look on the Navy War College degree on the wall as a shared accomplishment, and I hope that is true for every single one of your families here today. So to all the spouses, parents, children, and loved ones here today, thank you for your support and encouragement of these distinguished graduates. And how about a hand of applause for all our family members here today? Even the young, small children running around paying no attention to me. I love it. And now I want to congratulate the Naval War College's class of 2021 and 22. The intellectual acumen and personal drive that you've demonstrated marks you individually as a leader, capable of the analytic, but more importantly, more importantly, the strategic problem solving that our world requires today. My challenge to you is this. Use the strong grounding that you've received from this institution to deter and prevent conflicts, not just win them. 60 years ago, Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev began preparations to place nuclear missiles on the island of my birthplace, Cuba. It precipitated what is known as the Cuban Missile Crisis. President Kennedy's team worked around the clock to take the world back from the brink of nuclear war. They challenged multiple aspects of warfighting doctrine, from the first strike timelines to the minimum effective range of a naval blockade. They considered the lessons of history, including the escalations of World War I that haunted President Kennedy as he read from Barbara Tuckman's The Guns of August. They made the best decisions they could with incomplete information. But above all, they focused on the big picture, on the strategy, finding a way to deter a malign adversary while at the same time maintaining the communication that provided the Soviet Union with a peaceful way out. 
you must be able to do the same. You have been given the tools to make tough decisions when knowledge is incomplete and the risks are high. Alfred Thayer Mahan, whose office was in that corner office there, said that the study of history lies at the foundation of all sound military conclusions and practice. But as you have learned at this institution, you cannot study passively. History must be inter interrogated, examined, and challenged in order to apply it successfully to the lessons of today. The 19th century French writer Pierre-Marc Gaston said that we should be judged by our questions, not our answers. And indeed, as secretary, I found that one of the most important aspects of my job is indeed just that, asking the right questions. You should all do the same. Because more than anything else, a healthy curiosity about what lies over the horizon will give you the space and time to adjust course. We need you to go beyond the ideas of this time and better prepare our world for the future. This week marks the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Midway. The carriers that won that battle were constructed before the war because of the foresight of naval thinkers willing to challenge battleship orthodoxy. The intelligence that pinpointed the enemy's location was achieved because of technology, creative thinking, and strategic analysis. And the success of our frontline pilots was enhanced by the tactics and formations developed through years of preparation and wargaming, and then the new domain of maritime aviation. But there were setbacks as well. For example, the torpedoes failed to perform as expected due to flawed and unchallenged assumptions and pre-war manufacturing and testing. And the actions of commanders on both sides contributed to significant missed opportunities as aviation warfare disrupted old concepts of distance, force concentration, and the culmination point. As we enter now the age of hypersonic missiles, fifth generation fighters, and renewed strategic competition, you must consider the lessons of the past through the lens of the present. Don't ever stop posing hard questions, challenging assumptions, and solving problems with creativity and drive. I assure you, you'll never have all the money that you want. When we founded this institution, Rear Admiral Stephen Luce said the Navy War College would be, quote, a place of original research on all questions of war and statementship for the prevention of war. These words are etched on glass at the entrance to the college to remind us all of the basis of the college's success and its very purpose. There are many war colleges and many staff colleges around the world, but there, is, but there are few that have such a distinguished faculty or history itself. Their research and writing stand at the forefront of the broadcast and most difficult security issues that nations and Navy face. These issues include the very nature and character of naval power, its uses, its limitations in both war and peace. The education that you received here is designed to provide you with the analytic skills and the methods to navigate the unknown. So as you go back to your daily responsibilities, be sure to maintain a continuous learning habit based on your experience at this college. Keep reimagining, reinventing, and reengineering to meet the relentless demand for innovation, because that's the only way that we can stay ahead of a rapidly changing world. One of my top priorities as Secretary of the Navy is to empower our people through a culture of warfighting excellence. The most important aspect of that is education. That is why I have formed a task force to examine our approach to professional military education, from teaching methods and curriculum to institutional investments. Later this year, I will release an education strategy based on those findings to ensure we are advancing the effective, relevant, and adoptive education required to maintain the advantage over our adversaries. Our mission demands leaders like yourselves who possess the highest intellectual and warfighting capabilities to confront the many dangers of this complex world. Our naval education institutions must develop leaders like yourself with the warfighting rigor, intellectual capacity, and innovation to hold our strategic advantage against our competitors. The Navy War College is central to that effort. Its many departments and programs have a direct impact on our operations and strategic planning. Our senior uniform leaders and I have taken part in many exercises already here at the Wargaming Department, using the results to directly inform our operational practices. The Center for Naval Warfare Studies provides vital analytic tools for leaders across the department. The Charles H. Stockton Center for the Study of International Law 
is foundational to our understanding and application of the law of naval warfare. The Institutes for China and Russia Maritime studies bring linguistic and cultural understanding to the areas which will define the strategic environment for decades to come. Other important centers here focus on critical areas such as cyber and future naval warfare and the central aspects of leadership and ethics. And the John B. Hattendorf Center for Maritime Historical Research brings new and original insights to history that help us understand current and future issues. It was my privilege to study under the tutelage of Professor Haddendorf, who is joining us today through Zoom, and I wish him a speedy recovery. I don't know if he ever imagined that his student would become Secretary of the Navy, but I'm proud to be, have always been his student. The lessons I learned from him about Mahan and Sun Tzu served me well throughout my career as a surface warfare officer from the Cold War to the Gulf War to the Global War on Terror. These lessons informed the Secretary of the Navy the world transforms again with hostile aggression from Moscow, the pacing threat of Beijing, and the accelerating reality of climate change. Mahan's emphasis on sea control has never been more relevant, as nearly 90% of the world's trade travels on the ocean, and one-third of that passing through the South China Sea. But the definition of sea control must be expanded to, ex to encompass the many domains that were not ex exploited as warfighting theaters in Mahan's time, air, undersea, cyberspace, and more. Our national and economic security depends on a modern vision of sea control through distributed maritime operations and other warfighting concepts. Most of all, it depends on strong, principled, and cooperative naval forces backed by sound strategy. Each of you has an important role to play in that effort. Those of you returning to the fleet and the force must take from this campus a deep understanding of how our warfighting concepts contribute to our overall integrated deterrence efforts. We look to those who work on Capitol Hill to ensure that policies and appropriations align with the strategic needs of our nation. We look to our civilians, industry, and academic leaders to keep challenging assumptions and innovating new solutions to our global challenges. Staying ahead of cybersecurity, hypersonic weapons, logistics, and acquisitions takes the best minds of the entire force. Addressing global challenges like climate change requires the principal cooperation and the best ideas of our entire world. And we look to the many international students here today to continue working, exercising, thinking, and above all, communicating with us all for years to come. Earlier this week, I was at the Swedish Embassy celebrating the 500th anniversary of the Royal Swedish Navy. I was proud to note that our first international graduate here at the War College back in 1894 was actually from Sweden. But I was even more proud to note that there are Swedish graduates in the class today as well. All told, there are 120 international officers from 78 countries in the class of 2022. Civilians from 10 different agencies, plus congressional staff, sailors, Marines, soldiers, airmen, Coast Guard men. I look to your class as a model of cooperation and excellence, and I urge you to stay in touch and keep working with each other. While I learned much from my Naval War College professors, the most valuable lessons were the ones that we learned from each other. Those are the friendships that are still hold true today. I'm sure the Admiral would agree with me. There is no substitute for the shared experiences of our allies and partners working together to deter our adversaries and protect our world. And I'd like all our allies and partners to please stand up and take a moment to be recognized. Please stand up right now. Thank you. Last month, I visited the USS Sullivan's, a destroyer like the one I used to command. Last year, her crew completed a historic seven-month deployment in the combined strike group of the HMS Queen Elizabeth, the UK's new flagship carrier. Along the way, they operated alongside allies and partners, including Australia, France, Israel, Italy, New Zealand, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, and many others. Just two months after that deployment, the USS Sullivan's joined NATO allies in deterring Russian aggression with forward presence in the Danish Straits and the Baltic Seas. That is the level of allied unity and strength neither China nor Russia could ever hope to achieve. Because unlike Moscow and Beijing, we don't treat our allies like client states or satellites. We respect them as partners, leaders, and friends. We may not agree on everything, but we all agree that cooperation and principles must always stand above aggression and isolation. You must continue to build on that spirit as you move forward. 
Each of you is a diplomat, a problem solver, and a futurist for our world. Let the lessons of this beloved institution inform every aspect of your career. And don't ever lose sight of the tremendous network that you have right here. So go back to your services, but keep coordinating across the joint force. Go back to the Hill, but keep working across party lines. Go back to your agencies, but keep sharing your best ideas. And go back to your nations, but keep building on the bonds and friendship of support. Never forget that you've accomplished together here and how it can help build a better world. Let that spirit fuel the innovation we need to stay ahead and preserve the hard-won freedom of the seas. I would like to close by highlighting one particular leader and innovator who helped win and protect that freedom. He was an engineering officer and navigator aboard Landing Craft Support 53, a ship which saw action at Iwo Jima, Okinawa, and Formosa. As our 62nd Secretary of the Navy, he championed personally the Ohio-class submarine and the Aegis weapon system, both of which still defend our nation today. And as ambassador to the Netherlands, permanent representative to the Organization of American States and the, Euro and the U.S. representative to the European community, he helped forge the ironclad alliances and the partnerships that knit our world together today. He epitomizes the enduring service and commitment that every one of you can bring to this world. That is why I am so honored that he is here with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in again honoring the service of Ambassador Bill Mittendorf. I want to tell you, and I've reached out to every former Secretary of the Navy, our eldest is actually Paul Ignatius at the age of 101, and uh, Secretary Mittendorf is 98. I hope that's a trend that we continue to pursue in the future. <laughs> but allow me a moment to take this opportunity for a little surprise for the Secretary. So it is now my distinct honor and pleasure to announce that I am naming one of our newest destroyers DDG-138, in his honor, as the future USS J. William Mittendorf. The, the men and women the men and women who will sail that vessel for years to come will be strengthened by the legacy, please have a seat, of their distinguished namesake. And their service will be impacted in countless ways by the actions and decisions of today's graduates. So go forth, class of 2021 and 22, with the inspiration of those who came before you, like Ambassador Mittendorf, and those who depend on you, like all who, who will sail in his namesake destroyer. Once again, I am deeply honored, and I thank you and your families for your efforts to secure this marvelous education. Thank you for your commitment to public service, to global security, and the enduring cause of peace throughout the world. Congratulations, and may God bless each and every one of you and your families. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Del Toro, for your remarks, and thank you for your participation in this ceremony and your continued support of this college. Academic awards will now be presented to students who have distinguished themselves through exceptional achievement. For every resident student present here today, there are nine other students located around the globe engaged in the U.S. Naval War College's distance education programs. This year, there are 1,925 graduates of the College of Distance Education, of whom 121 are here with us today. Distance education is a unique challenge in that the student completes his or her education while engaged in their full-time day job, thus requiring special initiative and dedication. It is with a profound sense of camaraderie and appreciation for their efforts that we salute our distance education students. The McGinnis Family Award for Outstanding Performance in Non-Resident Seminar Education is sponsored by Captain D. Robert McGinnis, United States Navy Reserve, retired. 
a Naval War College Foundation Trustee Emeritus, a cash award, it recognizes the Fleet Seminar Program graduate of the College of Distance Education who displays superior standards of academic performance, professionalism, and community service. Mr. George Lang, Jr., Chief Executive Office of the Naval War College Foundation, will present the award. The winner of the McGinnis Family Award for Outstanding Performance in Non-Resident Seminar Education for the Class of 2022 is Lieutenant James Brewer, Medical Corps, United States Navy. The Admiral Arley A. Burke Award for Academic Excellence by an International Officer. This award is presented to the international master's degree student with the highest grade point average at the completion of the academic year. This year's award is presented to Lieutenant Commander Marta Pratolasi from Italy. the Navy League of the United States presents two awards to in-resident students, one to a graduate of the senior level college and one to a graduate of the intermediate level college. These awards are given in memory of Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce and Admiral William S. Sims, respectively. Admiral Luce was the first president of the Naval War College and Admiral Sims was president of the Naval War College at two points in his distinguished career. Recipients of this award are chosen based on their outstanding achievement across a spectrum of disciplines, including academic performance, participation in Naval War College activities, participation in civic and community activities, and promotion of the armed services in the public interest. Commander Mike Sline, U.S. Navy retired, past president, Newport County Council of the Navy League of the United States, will present the awards. The Stephen B. Luce Award for the Distinguished Graduate of the College of Naval Warfare is presented to Ms. Susan Bridenstine, Department of State. William S. Sims Award for the Distinguished Graduate of the College of Naval Command and Staff is presented to Major Deborah Gaddis, United States Air Force.
join us in congratulating all of the award winners for their outstanding efforts and performance and to show appreciation to the sponsors of the awards for their continued generosity to the U.S. Naval War College. We will now begin the presentation of graduates. Admiral Chatfield, please move to the podium. Naval Command College, please rise and remain standing. College of Naval Warfare, please rise and remain standing. Naval Staff College, please rise and remain standing. College of Naval Command and Staff, please rise and remain standing. Maritime Security and Governance Staff Course, please rise and remain standing. College of Distance Education, please rise and remain standing. Admiral Chatfield, I have the honor to present the United States Naval War College Class of 2022. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. And 21 and 20. <laughs> by the power vested in me by the Congress of the United States, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the New England Commission of Higher Education, I confer upon you the appropriate degrees and diplomas from the United States Naval War College with all the honors, rights, and privileges pertaining thereto. Will all attendees please join me in congratulating the 2022, 21 and 20 graduates of the United States Naval War College and their families. Graduates, please be seated. Graduates will now receive their diplomas. Beyond the requirements for graduation, certain individuals have distinguished themselves through academic excellence. A diploma with highest distinction is presented to the top 5% of each graduating class. A diploma with distinction is presented to the next 15% of each graduating class. Graduates will proceed to the stage as their name is read. Please hold your applause until all names have been read so that all names and recognitions may be heard. Graduates, as you come forward, please remove your covers and your sunglasses. Lieutenant Colonel William Ackman, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Amar Karuni, Algerian Naval Forces. Commander Penny Allerton, U.S. Navy. Captain Gonzalo Nieto, Argentine Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Allshouse, U.S. Marine Corps. Captain Edward Seymour, Royal Australian Navy. Captain Andrew Anderson, U.S. Navy. Captain Mohammed Almir, Royal Bahrain Navy. Commander Nathan Atkinson, U.S. Navy. Captain Mohammed Shamsul Haq, Bangladesh Navy. Commander Michael Augustin, U.S. Navy. Captain Mauricio Pinto, Brazilian Navy. Colonel Jerome Barber, U.S. Army. Captain Peter Dimitrov, Bulgarian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Ricardo Benavides, U.S. Marine Corps. Captain Christopher Nucci, Royal Canadian Navy. Commander Andrea Benvenuto, 
U.S. Navy. Commander Edward Gibbons, Chilean Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Lynn Berenson, U.S. Marine Corps. Commander Juan Carlos Orlarte, Colombian National Navy. Commander Maxwell Bierke, U.S. Navy. Commander Carlos Garzon, Ecuadorian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Newt Bonner, U.S. Marine Corps Reserve. Commander Mustafa Abdelrahman, Egyptian Naval Force. Commander Bradley Boyd, U.S. Navy. Commander Antoine Delaveau, French Navy. Ms. Susan Bridenstine, Department of State, with highest distinction. Commander Ole Poppenholtz, German Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Cameron, U.S. Air Force, with highest distinction. Captain Ben Abdul, Ghana Navy. Mr. Ryan Campbell, Department of State, with distinction. Captain Michael Yakamakis, Hellenic Navy. Colonel Avery Carney, U.S. Army. Captain Jinto Chaco, Indian Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Moises Castillo, U.S. Army Reserve. Captain James Siagian, Indonesian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Jesse Chase, U.S. Army, with distinction. Commander Uri Maurer, Israeli Navy. Mr. Michael Church, Naval Criminal Investigative Service. Captain Stefano Dono, Italian Navy. Lieutenant Commander Weston Kobe, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Brian Lundy, Jamaica Defense Force. Lieutenant Colonel Christina Cornwell, U.S. Army. Captain Yuki Nakamura, Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Culpepper, U.S. Army. Colonel Mohammed Abdur, Jordanian Armed Forces. Mr. Christopher Dixon, Defense Senior Leadership Development. Lieutenant Colonel Eliud Keter, Kenya Navy. Commander Ryan Dropic, U.S. Navy. Captain Tarak El Haj Shahad, Lebanese Naval Forces. Mr. Jason Duke, Defense Senior Leadership Development. Commander Tadas Jablonskis, Lithuanian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Edmund Eckhart, U.S. Army Reserve, with distinction. Commander Mohammed Erwan Che Mohammed Rani, Royal Malaysian Navy. Mr. Greg Edwards, Naval Sea Systems Command. Commander Rafael Lopez Mena, Mexican Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Walter Eman, U.S. Air National Guard. Captain Hisham El Amri, Royal Moroccan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Erickson, U.S. Army National Guard. Captain David Fairweather, Royal New Zealand Navy. Captain Stephen Everidge, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Captain Murtala Rogo, Nigerian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Sean Fellows, U.S. Air Force Reserve. Commander Steen Kloster, Royal Norwegian Navy. Ms. Sandra Fletcher, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Captain Salam Al Jabri, Royal Navy of Oman. Ms. Catherine Fisher, U.S. Government, with highest distinction. Captain Amir Iqbal, Pakistan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Foisey, U.S. Air Force. Commander Antonio Bosch, Philippine Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Francis, U.S. Air National Guard, with distinction. Captain Artur Kolodzinski, Polish Navy. Commander Jeremy Garcia, U.S. Navy. Captain Adrian Dinka, Romanian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Ashley Gellner, U.S. Air National Guard, with distinction. Commander Bokyu Kim, Republic of Korea Navy. Mr. David Giffen, Department of the Army. Commander Dakiala Atubiti, Royal Saudi Naval Forces. Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Glover, U.S. Marine Corps. Commander Kula Telitsane, South African Navy. 
Ms. Lisa Giuliano, Department of State. Captain Jose Emilio Regadon, Spanish Navy. Commander Robert Goad, U.S. Navy. Captain Nadeth Wapola, Sri Lanka Navy. Mrs. Wendy Golden, Defense Senior Leadership Development. Commander Anders Backstrom, Royal Swedish Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Karen Gonzalez Torres, U.S. Army. Commander Huang Hello, Taiwan Navy. Commander Philip Granati, U.S. Coast Guard. Commander Peron Songkao, Royal Thai Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Amelia Griffith, U.S. Marine Corps Reserve, with highest distinction. Commander Mohammed Hamdi, Tunisia Navy. Colonel Kyle Grigo, U.S. Air Force. Colonel Alexei Kalchenko, Ukrainian Marine Command. Lieutenant Colonel John Gutoskis, U.S. Army National Guard, with highest distinction. Colonel Khaled Alkabi, United Arab, Arab Emirates Navy. Lieutenant Colonel John Habestad, U.S. Air Force. Commander Stephen White, Royal Navy. Disarm. Lieutenant Colonel Lakeisha Hant, U.S. Army. Commander Randy Geyer, United States Navy. Commander John Harbaugh, U.S. Navy. Colonel Ryan Barnett, United States Army. Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Herman, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel Kwabana Jima, United States Marine Corps. Captain Danielle Higson, U.S. Navy. Captain Anita Selleck, Royal Australian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Horke, U.S. Army. Captain Carl Carlone Bethel, Royal Bahamas Defense Force. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Howerton, U.S. Army National Guard. Captain Ivo Schneider, German Navy. Ms. Rebecca Hoy, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Commander Christian Hilmer, German Navy. Mr. Bradley Hurst, Department of State, with distinction. Commander Naif Alida, Royal Saudi Navy Forces. Commander Jason Aletto, U.S. Navy. Captain Wu Jahu, Taiwan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Jensen, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Commander Simon Rogers, Royal Navy. Lieutenant Colonel B.G. John, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Elia Chobo, Albanian Naval Force. Commander Lucas Johnson, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Faisal Taug, Algerian Navy. Colonel Anthony Keller, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Kanu Kabedi, Angola Navy. Commander Ryan Kelly, U.S. Coast Guard. Lieutenant Orkan Safarov, Azerbaijan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Megan Kennerly, U.S. Marine Corps, with highest distinction. Major Hassan Al Khalifa, Royal Bahrain Naval Force. Colonel Thomas Kitch, U.S. Marine Corps. Thanks, sir. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander Moino Haq Khan, Bangladesh Navy. Mr. Thomas Comins, Department of State. Lieutenant Nelly Latsu, Benin Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Carson Kuhlman, U.S. Air Force. Commander Rafael Azevedo, Brazilian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Everett LaCroix, U.S. Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Roizen Stoyanov, Bulgarian Navy. Colonel Michelle LaFleur, U.S. Army Reserve. Commander Henri Tinchu, Cameroon Navy. Colonel Scott Lewis, U.S. Army National Guard. 
Lieutenant Commander Daniel Ramirez, Columbia Navy. Commander Christopher Lingard, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Ivana Chosic, Croatian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Leia Linger, U.S. Army Reserve. Lieutenant Guled Osman Musa, Djibouti Navy. Colonel Richard Lopez, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Victor Soriano, Dominican Republic Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Ma, U.S. Air National Guard. Commander Sharif Mustafa, Egyptian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Maddox, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Taro Vair, Estonian Navy. Colonel Robert McGee, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Helsi Mongos Nitz, Gabon Navy. Ms. Angela Major, Department of the Army. Lieutenant Commander Manish Dakad, Indian Navy. Mr. Hagen Maroney, Department of State, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Rahmad Widianto, Indonesian Navy. Captain Harry Marsh, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Ron Koval, Israeli Navy. Commander Mark Matkovich, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Marta Pardalesi, Italian Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Mao, U.S. Army Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Miguel Ferguson, Jamaican Defense Force Coast Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Kelly Mao, U.S. Army Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Keiji Yahada, Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. Lieutenant Colonel Corey McCoy, U.S. Army. Major Ra'ad Ra'ed Altouche, Jordan Armed Force Arab Army. Colonel Jay McFarland, U.S. Army. Major Peter Waweru, Kenya Navy. Colonel Timothy Meisner, U.S. Army, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Sang Hoon Shin, Korea Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Mercado, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Dennis Yeltsovs, Latvia Navy. Mr. Edward Mikulski, USAID. Lieutenant Commander Andreas Gralis, Lithuanian Navy. Ms. Unjana Modi, Department of State, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Samuelson Andreasina, Malagasy Navy. Captain Jared Moore, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Mustafa Mozan, Royal Malaysian Naval Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Moore, U.S. Army. Major Ahmed Jamil, Maldives National Defense Force Coast Guard. Mr. Scott Mowry, Defense Senior Leadership Development. Commander Gabriel Ayala, Mexican Navy. Mr. Robert Myhill, U.S. Government, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Vladimir Stanoyevich, Montenegro Navy. Mr. Jeffrey Orschel, U.S. Government. Lieutenant Commander Othman Asafi, Royal Moroccan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Brian Neal, U.S. Air Force. Major Tim Van Witch, Royal Netherlands Marine Corps. Commander Michael Ordonez, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Nedefreke Ertu, Nigerian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Mark Osano, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Tor Simonson, Royal Norwegian Navy. Commander Michael Peters, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Mohammed Al Sulaimi, Royal Navy of Oman. Lieutenant Colonel Amir Buzeshki, U.S. Army National Guard. Lieutenant Commander Babur Ibn Salim, Pakistan Navy. Mr. Nathan Pincus, Defense Intelligence Agency, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Joey Mariag, Philippine Navy. Mr. Matthew Prince, Department of State. Lieutenant Commander Piotr Lis, Polish Navy. 
Lieutenant Colonel Gregory Repis, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Lorenzo Toma, Romanian Naval Forces. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Rigoni, U.S. Air Force Reserve. Lieutenant Kenish Garnett, St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force, Coast Guard. Colonel David Rowland, U.S. Army. Commander Rami Alzarani, Royal Saudi Naval Forces. Commander Stacy Ruch, U.S. Coast Guard. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Mohamedou Bey, Senegalese Navy. Colonel Joseph Ruzichka, U.S. Army. Major Arshio Mondon, Seychelles Defense Force. Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Sayman, U.S. Army National Guard. Major Kalok So, Republic of Singapore Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Savage, U.S. Marine Corps, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Santiago Santa Maria, Armada. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Scher, U.S. Army, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Uranga Budica, Sri Lanka Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Arnold Selvage, U.S. Marine Corps, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Fabian Tam, Royal Swedish Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Travis Sepp, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Chong and Yin, Taiwan Navy. Colonel Brian Servant, U.S. Air Force. Commander Seth Mossambogo, Tanzania Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Dalbert Shaw, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Pepon Demark, Royal Thai Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Brian Sheehan, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Nicolau Sosa Guterres, Naval Component of Timor Leste Defense Force. Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Schilly, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Kellyanne Bourne, Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard. Commander Paul Sherlea, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Nalfa Omri, Tunisia Navy. Mr. Daniel Simonson, Defense Senior Leadership Development. Commander Kostyantin Visotsky, Naval Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. Commander Michael Sledge, U.S. Navy. Woo! Lieutenant Colonel Abdullah al Qaidi, United Arab Emirates Navy. Captain Bowen Spivak, U.S. Coast Guard, with distinction. Major Robert Benda, United States Marine Corps. Commander John Siege, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Margaret Brown, United States Coast Guard. Colonel Edward Sullivan, U.S. Army, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Sharon Wilson, United States Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Demetric Thomas, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Christopher Okimura, United States Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Julian Thomas, U.S. Air Force. Major Christopher Thrasher, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Colonel James Thornburg, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Brian Dow, Vietnam People's Navy. Mr. Nathan Tidwell, Department of State, with distinction. Lieutenant Cameron Tarbali, Azerbaijan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel John Vanden Bemden, U.S. Air Force. Commander Leonardo Palmiera, Brazilian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Derek Vincent, U.S. Air Force. Inspector Principal Wiggins Pierre Louis, Haitian Coast Guard. Ms. Robin White, Defense Senior Leadership Development. Lieutenant Colonel Asa Almiden, Kuwait Navy. Colonel Anthony Whitfield, U.S. Army. Commander Mohammed Zashim Uden, Bangladesh Navy. Colonel Nicholas Waldron, U.S. Marine Corps, with distinction. Commander Georgi Jichev, 
Bulgarian Naval Forces. Mr. Andrew Wilson, Naval Criminal Investigative Service. Lieutenant Irino Nazareth Nicol, Navy of Equatorial Guinea. Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Wishard, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Coast Guard Luther Singh, Guiana Defense Force Coast Guard, with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Cynthia Whitnam, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Iko Triatomo, Indonesia Navy. Commander Jason Whitrock, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Izar bin Alias, Royal Malaysian Navy. Colonel Corey Woods, U.S. Army. Major Ahmed Mohammed, Maldivian Coast Guard, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Gregory Warden, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Yakub Moin, Marination Navy. Mr. Michael Yatsevich, Naval Sea Systems Command. Lieutenant Commander Sasa Sepic, Montenegro Navy, with distinction. Major Zachary Abood, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Colonel Mustafa Haji, Royal Moroccan Air Force. Major Tiffany Adams, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Junior Grade Alvin Bello, Panamanian National Navy. Lieutenant Commander Adam Adeliano, U.S. Navy, with highest distinction. Commander Dusan Ristik, Serbian Armed Forces. Lieutenant Commander Victor, Victor Almodovar, U.S. Coast Guard. Lieutenant Elisam Tremoa, Togolese National Navy. Major Carl Anderson, U.S. Marine Corps. Mr. Alex B. Albatria, Jr., Department of Homeland Security, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Kenneth Anderson, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Antoine A. Adams, United States Coast Guard, with distinction. Major Chad Atkinson Adams, U.S. Air Force, with yeah. distinction. Ms. Larkin S. Akins, Department of Labor, Chicago, Illinois. Major Edward Bay, U.S. Air Force. Mr. Aaron Allen, United States House of Representatives. Major Lyndon Bartlett, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Mr. Timothy, I'm sorry, Commander Timothy G. Angers, United States Navy Reserve. Major William Biggerstaff, U.S. Army, with distinction. Lieutenant William L. Baker, United States Navy, with distinction. Major Laurie Blair, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Gihuana K. Bates, Nurse Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Brock Blaisdell, U.S. Coast Guard. Mr. Daniel J. Berg, United States Border Patrol, San Diego, California. Mr. Thomas Breen, Naval Sea Systems Command, with distinction. Ms. Alicia E. Braceland, Fleet Logistics Center, San Diego. Major Andrea Brooks, U.S. Army Reserve. Mr. Thomas J. Brodowski, Jr., Department of Labor, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Megan Brooks, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Christopher E. Castillo, Medical Service Corps, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Clinton Brown, U.S. Navy. Mr. John F. Chick, Department of Commerce, Washington, D.C., with distinction. Commander Donald Bryant, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Alexander C. Cleveland, U.S. Navy. Major Jesse Burdick, U.S. Marine Corps, with distinction. Mr. Mark B. Cofield. United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Matthew Bush, U.S. Navy. Thank you. Okay. Lieutenant Commander Rachel M. Colden, Nurse Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Mr. Alvin Butler, Department of State. Miss Sarah Coyle, United States House of Representatives. 
Lieutenant Commander Allison Cameron, U.S. Navy. Commander James K. Cullen II, United States Coast Guard, Washington, D.C. Major Shane Carroll, U.S. Air Force. Mr. Ryan S. Demore, Government Accountability Office, Washington, D.C., with highest distinction. Lieutenant Joseph Cassidy, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Luke T. DeLima, United States Coast Guard. Major Joseph Castro, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Ms. Carolyn E. Demery, Government Accountability Office, Washington, D.C. Ms. Christina Clay, Department of State, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Christopher J. Duarte, United States Navy Reserve. Major Lisa Cochran, U.S. Air Force. Mrs. Natasha Y. Eby, United States, I'm sorry, yes, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Major William Coleman, U.S. Marine Corps. Dr. Joshua J. Edwards, Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division, Patuxent River, Maryland, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Alexander Koval, U.S. Navy. Mrs. Courtney W. Fellows, United States Senate, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Alexander Crosby, U.S. Navy. Captain David D. Ferris, Jr., United States Navy Reserve. Major Tracy Davis, U.S. Air Force. Mr. Stephen W. Gezi, Naval Criminal Investigative Service, Washington, D.C. Major Wade Deal, U.S. Army, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Stephen J. Nilka, Medical Service Corps, United States Navy Reserve, with distinction. Major Lauren DeBall, U.S. Army. Ms. Samantha J. Gottschall, Department of Defense, Washington, D.C. Commander Benjamin Desmond, U.S. Navy. Ms. Andrea J. Gross, Naval War College, Newport, Rhode Island. Lieutenant Commander Aaron Diaz, U.S. Navy. Ms. Amy M. Grom, Joint Staff, Suffolk, Virginia. Mr. Theodore Deal, Department of State. Lieutenant Cesarina T. G. Haig, United States Navy Reserve. Commander Sean Dusa, U.S. Navy. Major James P. Haig, United States Marine Corps Reserve, with distinction. Ms. Kanoko Esheim, Naval Sea Systems Command. Mr. Michael E. Hillman. Federal Bureau of Investigation, Dallas, Texas. Major Timothy Fisher, U.S. Army. Woo! Go, TJ! <laughs> Ms. Tanner M. Hishta, United States Senate, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Christian Fletcher, U.S. Navy. He's so handsome! <laughs> Lieutenant Benjamin G. Hole, <laughs> Supply Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Major Edward Fitzpatrick, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander James M. Hurt, United States Coast Guard. Major Jancy Franklin, U.S. Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Eric R. Icke, United States Naval Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Joshua Flaccus, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Jesse Izdepski, United States Navy, with distinction. Major Deborah Gaddis, U.S. Air Force, with highest distinction. Mr. Benjamin J. Jarrett, Appalachian Regional Commission, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Cody Garner, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Christopher M. Joswiak, United States Navy, with escort and with distinction.
Mr. Ryan P. Keating, United States House of Representatives. Major Brian Gothard, U.S. Army. Mr. Daniel J. Keller, Naval Air Systems Command, Patuxent River, Maryland. Major David Grant, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Patrick W. Kelly Housky, United States Navy. Major Tricia Gillibo, U.S. Air Force. Mr. Michael Corrin, United States Congress, Washington, D.C. Major Darren Gurry, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Jennifer L. Lane, United States Coast Guard. Major Kevin Hahn, U.S. Army. Commander Richard S. Langton, Medical Corps, United States Navy. Major Kyle Henratty, U.S. Army, with distinction. Miss Rachel A. Ledbetter, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Major Cheston Hickman, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Anson Liu, United States Navy. Major Jasmine Hickman, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Peter Losey, Nurse Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Major Christian Hipner, Defense Intelligence Agency. Dr. Jamie R. Lucas, Department of the Navy, San Diego, California. Major Kyle Holloway, U.S. Marine Corps Reserve, with distinction. Commander Paul J. Mangini, United States Coast Guard. Major Octave Hudegbi, U.S. Army. Ms. Emily L. Manning, United States Senate, Washington, D.C. Major Matthew Hauser, U.S. Air Force. Mr. Jonathan E. Martinez, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Caitlin Howitt, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Benjamin S. Massengale, United States Navy. Mr. Andrew Johnson, Department of State. Thank you. Lieutenant Commander Ashley A. McCauley, United States Navy. Major Daniel Johnson, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Daniel O. McElwee, United States Navy. Major Billy Jones, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Daniel M. Meidenbauer, United States Navy Reserve, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Richard Jones, U.S. Navy. Woo! I love you, man! <laughs> Ms. Mrs. Emma C. Minicky, Cryptologic Warfare Maritime Activity, Fort Meade, Maryland. Lieutenant Commander Samuel Jordan, U.S. Navy. Mr. Victor F. Mena Zambrano, Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts, Washington, D.C. Major Luke Caspari, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Mr. Michael B. Mendoza, Department of Defense, Office of the Inspector General, Alexandria, Virginia. Major Ju Hyong Kim, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Robert E. Mook, United States Naval Reserve, with distinction. Major Andrew Kimball, U.S. Marine Corps. Captain Richard E. Neiman, Jr., United States Coast Guard, retired. Lieutenant Commander William Krantz, U.S. Navy. Mr. Ryan New, Department of the Air Force, Washington, D.C., with distinction. Ma Major Thomas Coots, U.S. Air Force, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Brianna K. Nicholas, United States Coast Guard. Major Justin Lacey, U.S. Army. Commander Jason T. Ogden, United States Naval Reserve. Lieutenant Commander David Lane, U.S. Navy. Thank you. Lieutenant Giancarlo A. Palazzo, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Rene Lapidario, U.S. Navy. Mrs. Victoria V. Phoenix, United States Coast Guard Headquarters, Washington, D.C. 
Lieutenant Commander Richard Laraway, U.S. Navy. Ms. Margaret E. Platt, United States Senate, Washington, D.C., with distinction. Mr. Joshua Larson, Naval Sea Systems Command. Lieutenant Colonel Willis F. Potter II, United States Air National Guard. Major Taylor Lau, U.S. Army. Mr. James P. Raley, Department of Defense, Washington, D.C. Major Andrew Lawler, U.S. Air Force. Ms. Hillary N. Ranieri, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Mr. Peter Letty, Department of the Army. Lieutenant Commander Richard S. Rawls, United States Navy. Major Bryce Livingston, U.S. Army. Mr. Eric S. Reese, Customs and Border Protection, Washington, D.C. Major John Logan, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Daniel J. Riley, United States Coast Guard. Major David McIntosh, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Jessica J. Rainier, United States Navy Reserve, with distinction. Major John Mahood, U.S. Army. Ms. Eleanor Richards, Mariner Skills Training Center Atlantic, Norfolk, Virginia. Lieutenant Robert Mancini, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Shane T. Riley, United States Naval Reserve. Major Paul Marcinko, U.S. Army National Guard. Ms. Heather L. Salinas, United States Senate, Washington, D.C., with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Ryan Matlock, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Marion E. Sams, United States Navy. Major Brian Mollier, U.S. Army, with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Matthew S. Sargent, United States Naval Reserve. Major Eric May, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Kimi K. Schultes, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy. Major John McDonald, U.S. Space Force. Love it, our one and only. Dr. Shayla Selimovic, Department of Health and Human Services, Washington, D.C. Major Samantha McGuire, U.S. Army. Ms. Natalie L. Shen, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, Washington, D.C. Major Tyler McGuire, U.S. Army, with distinction. Mr. Salem J. Simon, United States Border Patrol, San Diego, California. Lieutenant Commander Nicholas Memering, U.S. Navy, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Kyle A. Solana, United States Navy. Major Michael Mena, U.S. Air Force. Captain Alexander N. Sukhanov, United States Navy Reserve. Major Megan Metz, U.S. Army. Mr. Rory M. Stanley, United States Senate, Washington, D.C. Major Lance Mogard, U.S. Army. Woo! Ms. Ashley Sylvester, United States Department of Homeland Security, with distinction. Major Kevin Monahan. U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Gregory Sudirth, United States Navy. Major William Morrison, U.S. Marine Corps. My Lieutenant hand. Nicholas J. Van Weingart, Civil Engineering Corps, United States Navy. Major Sean Monahan, U.S. Army Reserve. Mr. Dylan J. Vorbach, United States Senate, Washington, D.C., with distinction. Major Mitch Murray, U.S. Army. 
Lieutenant Commander Theodore P. Warren, United States Coast Guard with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Christopher Nelson, U.S. Navy. Mr. Richard G. Windsor, Government Accountability Office, Washington, D.C. Major Dustin Nicholson, U.S. Marine Corps, with highest distinction. Mr. Bailey Wong, Government Accountability Office, Washington, D.C., with highest distinction. Major James Nuxall, U.S. Army. Ms. Alice A. Young, Naval Surface Warfare Center, Dahlgren, Virginia. Major Patrick O'Neill, U.S. Army. Ms. Maria R. M. Bowie, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C., with highest distinction. Major Jason Parks, U.S. Army, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Jarrell C. Boyce, United States Navy. Mr. John Payne, Department of State. Lieutenant James E. T. Brewer, Medical Corps, United States Navy. Major Todd Pepino, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Philip G. Carson, United States Naval Reserve. Major David Peplinski, U.S. Army. Mr. Michael P. Dior Orazio, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Yosef Perfido, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Owen Eduhonba, Human Resources, United States Navy. Major Ryan Perhala, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Ms. Haley Grayhone, United States Senate, Washington, D.C. Mrs. Lauren Perlaza, Department of State, with distinction. Lieutenant Stephen M. Yagi, Medical Service Corps, United States Navy. Commander Eric Peterson, U.S. Navy. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Simon B. Unler, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C., with highest distinction. Mr. Brian Pitson, Department of State. Mr. Heinz F. Kaiser, United States House of Representatives, Annapolis, Maryland. Major Wolf Powell, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Ilya V. Havrutsky, Medical Service Corps, United States Navy. Major Julie Rainwaters, U.S. Air Force. Ms. Maureen Luna Long, United States Government Accountability Office, Washington, D.C. Major William Recalde, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Benjamin P. McFarland, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Luke Richmond, U.S. Navy. Major Albert K. Ney III, United States Army. Mr. Jorge Rodriguez, U.S. Special Operations Command. Mr. Lawrence Provost, Department of Veterans Affairs, National Cemetery Administration, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Brendan Rock, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Ariel Kilau, Nurse Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Major Michael Ryan, U.S. Air Force. Mr. Julian Valadez, United States Fleet Cyber Command, Fort Meade, Maryland. Major Skip Saito, U.S. Air National Guard. Lieutenant Siddharth Swaninathan, United States Navy. Major John Salas, U.S. Army National Guard, with distinction. Major Tanya Sang, U.S. Army National Guard. Major Spencer Chardine, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Major Wesley Schultz, U.S. Air Force.
Major Timothy Shelby, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander David Shelton, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Taylor Shope, U.S. Navy. Major Matthew Small, U.S. Army. Major Anthony Smith, U.S. Army Reserve. Major Joseph Smith, U.S. Army. Major Colby Sordovic, U.S. Army. Major Stephen Stapleton, U.S. Army. Woo! That's my best friend! <laughs> Major Cynthia Stevenson, U.S. Army. Major Rebecca Stottlemyer, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Christopher Sutton, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Covell Thomas, U.S. Navy. Major Fleming Thompson, U.S. Air Force. Major George Thompson, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Robert Thompson, U.S. Navy. Major Michael Tipton, U.S. Marine Corps, with distinction. All right, Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> Ms. Emma Troche, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Major Philip Turner, U.S. Marine Corps, with highest distinction. Thank you. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Jason Waddell, U.S. Navy. Major Daniel Walker, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Stephen Walsh, U.S. Navy, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Stephanie Washington, U.S. Coast Guard. Lieutenant Commander Aaron Warhan, U.S. Navy. Major Zachary West, U.S. Army, with distinction. Major Sterling Williams, U.S. Air Force. Major John Wise, U.S. Marine Corps Reserve. And Lieutenant Brian Wiestewald, U.S. Navy. Admiral Chatfield will now deliver her closing remarks. It is now my honor to bring these proceedings to a close. Secretary Del Toro, thank you for your thoughtful and inspirational remarks today and for your continued strong leadership of our Navy, your tireless support of this institution and all our Navy flagship educational institutions. Ambassador Mittendorf, who is here, we celebrate you with this great announcement today that honors your life and legacy to this nation. To our Naval War College faculty and staff, Today, you must be so proud. To all of our graduates, you have a community of support here forever. For 137 years, we have graduated students on behalf 
of preserving the peace and preparing for warfare. Our faculty and staff have labored on behalf of our Navy and our nation. And there's a lot of success in seeing the tangible benefits of the hours of preparation, classroom time, and special support. And I would like to have our students give a warm round of applause to the faculty and staff who have invested so much in you. We know that you will be well prepared for the increasingly complex and challenging security environment that faces us in the future. Thank you very much for being here as part of this community of scholars, operators, and practitioners. To family and friends, thank you for joining us. Whether you're here in person or whether you are virtually following these ceremonies or viewing them in the future, please know that we recognize that your presence in the lives of these alumni make our time in service so much more rewarding. Life as a public servant and in the profession of arms, it's a team sport and we count so much and draw from the love, encouragement, and devotion. And that this year and in the past years, especially during COVID, has helped each student maintain a proper balance between mind, body, and spirit during their intellectual journey. So thank you. And to our graduates, now graduates of the United States Naval War College, as you return to your operational positions throughout the world, yeah, we'll pack up that education, those books, we'll place them on the shelf. Those experience, the experiences that you've had, you'll relive them as you encounter people throughout the time of your service. I think about our CNO distinguished international fellows, Admirals Barrera, Verma, and Sonnet. How many sailors, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, international military students, how many joint students they have seen pass through here, and all of our faculty who remember your time with us. As you return to your operational positions, don't forget that you learned something. Secretary Del Toro challenged you to remember what you've learned here and to build upon it. Find something that you'll focus on instead of returning to old habits. Your academic year here in Newport will only be a small slice of your total preparation, professionally and personally, that will happen throughout your careers. Don't park comfortably in your area of expertise. You know that when you collide with others, their viewpoints enrich your own and help you to frame problems in a new way, to develop new and innovative solutions, to integrate with the joint force across the interagency and with our allies and partners for a more effective set of solutions to challenges against a peaceful, rules-based international order. You're now members of the United States Naval War College Alumni Association. All you have to do is type in myusnwc.com and you'll find a vibrant community that's waiting to share with you and if you don't connect with us there, connect with us on LinkedIn or view us on our YouTube channel where you can pull down content of new scholarship that's happening and our signature lectures. I encourage you to stay connected with this community. 
and to continue to conduct outreach of your own engagement across the Naval Joint Interagency and international community. We're counting on you to cultivate a network of lifelong partnerships based on respect for diverse perspectives and enhanced by your focus on collaboration, innovation, and interoperability. And together with your feedback throughout the years, we will continue to push the bar higher. So please, when we send you a survey, and I know that you love our surveys, but when we send you our survey, give us more feedback. What are you encountering now that we might need to add to this curriculum? How will we see trends if you don't help us? So please, respond to those surveys when we send them. And with this ex educational experience, you now have so much more to offer in developing young leaders across the fleet. And I know, however long it is in your future, you will have the opportunities to look over and see a former mentor, as I do today, to see Vice Admiral Kevin Scott there, who mentored me so well 20 years ago, and who's here not for me today, but another, providing support again as a mentor. Thank you, sir, for joining us. We'll be a better military. We'll be a better Department of Defense. We'll be a richer and stronger government for all of that mentoring and sharing of the types of experiences that you've learned and the coaching that you can also lend to another. You depart today as graduates of this institution, but never forget that we are placing our trust in you as members of the profession of arms, as valued members of your organizations, and you heard how many organizations were represented here. There's a kinship among us all, the professional ethics, the horizontal learning, you know, the things you got from your books, and the vertical development from digging deep for meaning and growth personally. I know that you will all have many successes in your future, and we at the Naval War College hope to hear you share them with us, and please send us the best prospects for our future classes. From your United States Naval War College faculty and staff, we wish you the very best, good luck, and congratulations to all graduates today. Thank you. As part of a time-honored tradition at the U.S. Naval War College, we will sing the service songs of our nation's armed forces. We ask that each military and civilian service member veterans, and family members, please stand as their service song is played. Please remain standing until the completion of all service songs. Colonel Stuart Ferner, Senior Army Advisor, and all Army veterans, staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise. Please remain standing. <laughs> Colonel Craig Wanson, Senior Marine Corps Advisor, and all Marine Corps veterans, staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise.
Colonel Stephen Schinkel, Senior Air Force Advisor, and all Air Force veterans, staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise. Veterans, staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise. And I would encourage everyone to assist our Space Force officers and hum along. Captain Sean Fahey, Senior Coast Guard Advisor, and all Coast Guard veterans, staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise. Secretary Del Toro and all Navy veterans, staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise. Well done, please take your seats. <laughs> Chaplain Fastnot will deliver the benediction. Let us pray. Eternal One, protect us as we leave here to go protect our shores. We ask for a blessing of renewed passion to be placed upon those in the midst of fighting and training for all our freedoms. Lord, we ask that you give wisdom to our global and national leaders, bring peace to war-torn lands, keep us safe as we travel from here. We boldly yet humbly come and present these requests in all your holy and mighty names we pray, amen. All military personnel, please cover.
please stand and remain standing for the departure of the official party and dignitaries. This concludes today's ceremony. We thank you for joining us today. Safe travels to everyone.